Hey guys, Amanda here. Today we're going to go over how you can incentivize your users using the Badges API to hide and show content and get your users to complete actions to get new badges. To get started, let's take a look at the Badges API so you can see what's available to do. The first thing you'll want to note is that the Badges APIs are all under the Wix members backend. So you need to be using Wix members to be able to assign badges to your members. And you also can only call these API functions from your JSW files. And then you can export them and use them in the front end. Today, we're going to be using assign members to assign member badges based on member actions and list member badges so that we can see what badges the current member has when they log into the site. Over in your dashboard, you will want to go to site members. And if you've never set up badges before, you will see right above your um, site member list, you will see a place where you can manage badges. In my case, we're going to be working with two badges today. I have one badge that's a cherry that's for all of my site members. And then I have one badge that's for getting koalas. From the dashboard, you can also set your badges to only show up on certain members pages. This is available out of the box without any code. So if your use case only involves the users being able to see certain members pages based on their badges. This video isn't for you. You don't actually need any code. You can handle all that back here. What we're going to cover today is if you want to make a page that's not necessarily connected to the members area in any way, and you want to have a little more control, maybe you want to have some kind of leaderboard, have some kind of contest. This is really more for outside of the members area actions that you might want to leverage the badges API to be able to add some custom functionality. So let's take a look at what all the features are that I've put here so far. You'll see that we have an all badges repeater. Now this um, UI feature, we've just connected using a data set. I'm not going to be interacting with this with the code. So you can set this up. Normally, this will just pull all of your members badges from the content manager into the repeater and map as you usually would with any other content collection. This is going to show our users what all these available badges are. The other section that we're going to be a little more interested in today is called my badges. It's the same repeater, but this one is checking who the logged in user is and then populating this area based on what those badges are. And I'll show you how we're doing that in just a moment. If you want to set this up to follow along in your own code, there's a few other things you'll need. You'll want to have a little button called Get Koalas. And you can put that anywhere you want. And then this is our hidden strip full of pictures of koalas. This is the secret koala content that you're going to get today by getting that koalas badge. So to get this started, the first thing you would want to do is be able to get your current member and get all of their badges and load them into this My Badges area. So let's take a look at the code to make this happen. The first thing you're going to want to do is get that current member that's logged in. You're going to want to import current member from the Wix Members API and then await the response to get your logged in member data. From there, we can get the member ID by looking for logged in member ID. But now, as I was explaining before, we're going to need to go to the back end to be able to get the member badge data. In your back end, you're going to want to create a file called getbadges.jsw. In here, you're going to import badges from Wix members back end. We are passing the member ID into the get member badges. An important thing to note about this API is that it does expect an array in list member badges. You can actually pass in many member IDs and get all of their associated badges back. 
this could be an interesting use case to be able to create some kind of a leaderboard if you're maybe running a contest about who has different badges, when they got them, attaching it to a point system, perhaps something like that. In our case, we're only interested in the logged in member, but you still have to pass in that single ID in an array or it will not work. Back on the front end, we are awaiting the response from this exported function in the JSW. If it returns any badges, then we're going to move on to another query to get those member badges to be able to display them in the repeater. Now, the reason that we have to go on to a different query is because get um, list member badges only returns the badge IDs, and we can't really populate a, re a repeater with that. We need the rest of the information about that ID. So now that we have the ID or IDs of the badges that the user has, we need to call a Wix data .query, the members and badges collection. At this point, if you have not done so yet, you're going to want to import Wix data from Wix data to be able to use this API. So now we're querying this collection just like any other collection and using has some because there may be more than one badge ID to um, have it filter by all the all the available badge IDs and then give us some results to populate this repeater. Assuming that this um, comes back with some results, which it should because we're checking to make sure that there's badge IDs before we even call this function, you are going to now set the badges repeater data to the result the items in the results, and then in the on ready you can go ahead and map each part of the return data because now you have the whole badge object to the parts of your repeater. In our case, we're using the title of the badge. We're putting in the description of the badge, which is where we're telling the user what are the rules to get this badge. And then we're also putting the source for the data icon. And then finally, we're expanding that badge area that's now hidden once it has some data in it to show the user. On the front end, this logged in user has just the cherry badge. The available badges to this user are the cherry because they're a site member already, but there's also this koala badge. There's nothing else on the page to see right now. There's just a get koala badge button and it shows the user how to get that. Let's go back to the code. Now, we want to hook up this get koala badge button. We have the user's repeater populating based on the logged in user's badges, and we have the available badges populating from the dataset UI feature. Now we want to get the user to click that button so they can get access to their koala's content and then refresh this repeater so they can see that they now have the, the badge. The first thing we're going to want to do is hook up this button. So our button is called get koalas. On click, we're going to start an asynchronous function. Again, everything returns a promise. Assume you're always going to async await. We're going to let koalas equal await our next backend API function, which is get koala badge. This is going to again take that logged in member ID. So let's go back to the get badges and take a look at get koala badge. Again, it takes in a member. You will need to define whatever your badge ID is that is going to be the one you're looking for for this action. If you decide to use this code, you're going to want to change this ID out to whatever it is on your site. Even if you make it exactly koalas, your ID will be different. So what happens here is you're taking in the member ID, you're returning it and saying, for this badge ID, I want to assign this member or members. Again, these functions all take arrays because they can do multiple assigning at once. So make sure to pass that ID in as an array and make sure your badge ID is valid. Those are the two reasons that it would return undefined mostly is if your IDs are wrong or if you're trying to pass this in not within an array. Once that returns successfully, and there are koalas returned. We set this, we set the response of this to koalas. So if koalas, we're then gonna update the badge repeater. 
So down here, you're going to need to make a function called update badge repeater. And this is so the user doesn't have to refresh the page. We don't want to make the user do anything extra. So pass in that member ID to update badge repeater. Then we're calling get member badges again. That's the first function we use to list them because now the member has more badges returning. So we're going to call the get, ma get member badges again and return those results. Then call my badges again, which is how we originally populated the repeater, and now pass in the new list of badges. The, the other thing that will happen while this new query is running, after that's complete, we will also show them the koala's content. Heading over to the front end, let's see it all in action together. Get the console out of the way and let's refresh this page so you can see it all working. All right, the user gets to this site. They're loading their badges. They've seen that they want to get this koala badge and all they have to do is click this button. The koalas show up, the query is called and populates their new badge. The user has access to the new content and can immediately see that they now have this badge. This is a really simple example, but I hope that it shows you that it can be really powerful to incentivize your users to complete actions on your site and kind of gamify their experience. You can create a leaderboard and show them what everybody else is doing, show them your top badged users. Um, you can connect this to a series of points and write some logic to add and subtract points depending on what users do. You can give them coupons, give them special experiences, depending on what kind of services you're offering to your users. This is a really great way to create a really interesting custom experience. And you can create any kind of badges you, you want. You can use any icon images that you upload or create yourself. And it, it's a really flexible API. So the, again, the things that we went over today, make sure that the APIs are being used in the back end. Make sure that you're always passing in arrays. That's definitely something that can trip you up if you're only using a singular ID. And then finally, this is of course connected to the Wix members area. You will need it to be able to use these badge APIs.